All right, so you have a camera of some sort and you have a pretty good idea of the story you want to tell. You went out and you shot your clips. Great, now it's time to start with the editing, something that you might not have too much experience with. Well, I'm gonna give you a few tips to get you started. So this video is not so much for you experienced editors. More for the beginners. The idea here is to help new users of Final Cut Pro 10 build a basic kind of first workflow. And first off, I know that there are gonna be experienced editors out there that are probably gonna do things a lot differently than this. But like I said, I just kinda of wanna make the program less intimidating for new users. And then as you get better, you can modify this workflow, start using more quick keys, quick commands, and um, a lot more functions. I mean, the program is pretty heavy, so you can do a lot more stuff than what I'm gonna show today. Uh, all right, uh, let's begin. I have my library how to videos five open. This is where I have most of the recent how to videos that we've made. And here I create a new event for this particular video. Let's call it FCPX basics. When I create a new event, I always like to first make a set of keyword collections. Basically I go up to the event and I right click and I scroll down to keyword collections and I create keywords of things that I know I'm gonna be having in the video. For example, music, or sound effects, graphics. And in this video, I know I'm gonna be using screen records, or so screen captures, so I make a keyword collection with that. And of course, I'm gonna have video, but video could be a lot of different things. And so I'm starting with one keyword collection called video underscore story, which can be all the clips of me on camera. It could also be stock or B-roll and stuff like that. And then I import the assets I'm gonna be using to the video to each keyword collection. So I drag the music over to the music keyword collection and the screen captures to the screen captures uh, keyword collection. And then of course the, the video clips of me on camera into the video underscore story. Using keywords like this, it makes it a lot easier to find the clips that I'm looking for when I wanna put them in the timeline and create my project. I wanna point out one thing though related to the import. If you go up to preferences and go down to import, you can see here that you have the option of leaving your files in the place where they are or if you wanna import them to the library. What happens when the files are copied over to the library is of course that your library is going to get bigger. The file size of the library is going to get bigger. When I first started out, I did not realize why my hard drive was filling up so fast when I was editing and this was actually one of the reasons. Also, you have the option of creating optimized media or proxy files. For the web videos that we're making now, I don't feel that is necessary. So I'm gonna not check that box. But again, it depends on the project that you're working on. Really good thing to know though, so your hard drive doesn't just run out of space right away. In the event, you always of course have to create a project, which is basically the timeline that you're gonna be editing. When you're editing, this first layer here is the primary storyline. For me, I never add an audio or music file to this primary storyline. I also don't really put plain text layers in the primary storyline unless the text is part of some kind of fancy animation that I wanna use. And it's not often I actually put white text on a black background and keep that in my final video anyway. I do, on the other hand, quite often lay out a solid black layer in the main storyline and then add my video clips or text layers on top. I find this really useful when I'm, for example, trying to sync clips to an audio track. I can first lay out the audio track, then I can start adding clips on top, sync them to the music, and if I move one clip, I won't mess up how the other clips are synced to the audio track. There are, of course, ways I can do this with the video clips in the primary storyline as well, but I just find this way kind of handy. Someone in this community actually asked me this in the previous video when my computer screen was showing and I had a timeline up why there were so many layers stacked on top of each other. Uh, and usually when I do my rough edits, that's, what I, that's how I do it. I add one clip on top of each other and then I kind of test things out, see what works the best. And then as I get closer to a finished video, I clean it up and it looks a lot tidier. Now let's look at some quick keys. There are of course quick commands for pretty much everything, but you don't really need to learn them all right away. But let's start with 11 that are good to memorize. First, the shortcuts using the letters I, O and F. 
When you scroll over a clip in your browser, you set an in point and an out point for the segment you want to use with the letter I for in and O for out. Kind of makes sense. You can then choose to add that to your timeline or to be able to come back to that section later, you can give it a favorite tag. Just hit the letter F for favorite and a green bar will appear to highlight that particular segment. And what is cool is that you can pick out several different sections of the same clip and give them a favorite tag. So it doesn't just have to be once. To drop a highlighted segment into the timeline, you can use either the letter Q, W or E. E will put the clip at the end of the timeline. W will put it where the timeline bar is placed right at that time, slicing through any clip that is there already and putting the segment right in the primary storyline. And Q will put it where the timeline bar is, but on top of any clip that is there already. And then for some tools, A is your selection tool. It is kind of like your default and allows you to move clips around and trim them like this. And if you're trimming a clip in the primary storyline, the clip that is next to the cut will then slide in and fill in the gap. And the result is that you're actually changing the full length of the primary storyline. P, on the other hand, is for position, and it also allows you to move clips around, but you can also change the length of the clips in your primary storyline without changing the position of the clips after it. Instead, you're making a gap as a new kind of nothing clip which acts as a black background. R allows you to do selections in a clip. It can be really useful when, for example, changing the speed of just one part of the clip, or when changing the audio levels of a segment only. B is blade, and it allows you to cut a clip. Really good when you have someone talking and they have a lot of uh, um, hmm, gaps and that kind of stuff, like this. Gaps and that kind of stuff, like this. And last, I, I wanna bring up the shortcut you get by hitting the letter V. V is a tool that hides the selected clip. If you, for example, want to test out which B-roll clip that looks the best, you highlight the clip that you don't want to appear, you click V, and that mutes the whole clip, really useful. These are only a couple of simple tips, of course. Uh, there's a whole lot more you can do with the program, uh, but I want to give you guys some time to start editing, and also I have to edit up this video. So, uh, uh, as always, we hope that these tips are at least going to be helpful to some of you guys when you start editing. Thanks for watching, and see you next week.